Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're gonna take a look at this thing right here, which is the HP ProDesk 405 G4 Mini. And this little one liter PC has a feature that frankly a lot of people have been asking for. It has two one gigabit ethernet NICs. We have heard over and over again that people wanted something like, you know, a dual NIC option and stuff like that. And they've asked, we've done over, I think three dozen of these Project Tiny Mini Micro one liter PCs from HP, Dell and Lenovo. And so, you know, this is just one of those ones that people have been asking for over and over again. And I finally get to show that to you in this video. And one of the really fun things about this is that while this is the 405 G4 Mini, it turns out that the reason that we have two NICs in it is actually because of this system over here, which is the 805G6 Mini and its previous owner, Jose, who actually watches these videos and I bought the system from on eBay. And I don't think that Jose, when he sold me this unit, knew that he was gonna make a really awesome 405G4 Mini video, but that's where we are today and that's why this is super exciting. Now we actually got this unit back in like 2020 when we were just like first starting. I think this was like one of the ones that we got when we first started this Project Tiny Mini Micro series. And back then, about a year and a half ago, this system only cost about $326. Nowadays, there's sometimes you can find them for that. Sometimes they're gonna be a little bit more, but this particular one we really never did a review of because it was, well, boring. I mean, just really just wasn't that much exciting about it, but now we have something exciting to talk about, so we're gonna do it. And so for this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the hardware, talk a little bit about performance, power consumption, and then we're just gonna kind of get to our key lessons learned. We're definitely gonna cover that dual NIC situation and show you how that happened. And that's basically the plan for this video, so let's get going. Okay, so first off, let's take a look at the front of the system because, well, it's the front of the system. Here, we basically get a couple features and you're gonna see that there's a little battle scar on this one. What can you do? But basically we get two USB 3.1 Gen 1 port, so we get, those are five gigabit per second ports. And then we get two audio jacks, one's a headset jack, one is just a headphone jack. However, you can actually, I think, reconfigure these to be like line out and stuff like that. So it is kind of nice that HP actually has two headset jacks or two audio jacks in the front. We see this also on some of the Dell systems, but on the other hand, Lenovo systems tend to only have one audio jack on the front. Now, the other thing is though, that a lot of newer systems actually have USB type C on the front of these systems. So we don't get that here. These are still type A and it's all type pay on this, but that is what it is, is an older generation system. So when we look at the back of the system, basically we get two DisplayPort outputs, and these are specifically DisplayPort 1.2 ports. And these DisplayPort 1.2 ports are pretty standard in this. A lot of times Lenovo will give you an HDMI port, but Dell usually does two DisplayPorts as well. Now we also get four USB ports. All of these USB type A ports are actually USB 3 ports and they're five gigabit per second ports. So we don't necessarily get like the 10 gigabit per second that we saw on some system of the Gen 2 ports that we've seen on some kind of around this era. And we also don't get any USB-C ports, but at the same time, it is nice that we don't have any USB 2 ports. There are many systems, I think even the 400, uh, ProDesk 400 G4, this is the Intel version of this, did have USB 2 ports. And so it is kind of nice that that is a nicer feature, I guess, on this AMD system. Okay, so let's get to it real quick. And that is that when we purchased the system, it actually did not have anything here in the Flex IO slot. This was just, kind of a just blank slot. There wasn't anything there. And sometimes actually hard to figure out how to configure this on some of HP's lower models. Now in this slot, in theory, you can go put a whole bunch of different things. Like you could have another display output. You can get, you know, HDMI, you can get display port. I mean, there's all kinds of different things. You get VGA, all that kind of stuff you can get in here. But one of the really cool things was that we actually have a one gig ethernet. And the reason that we had this one gig ethernet is because we actually got the one gig ethernet and then uh, we had to find a system to put it in and this didn't have anything in it. So we actually upgraded this one after the fact. Very cool. We're gonna talk a little bit about some of the nuances to this a little bit later. We also get our Realtek one gig ethernet port because that's just kind of what you get in these. And then the other thing that you're not gonna notice in this is you're not gonna notice that there's like an external antenna lead for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. That's actually all internal. So you're not gonna see like an external, you know, hard point for an antenna 
antenna here. That's just kind of how HP does it. And actually, you know, the more that we've used these systems, I have to say, I do kind of like that better. It's just a little bit cleaner. Okay, now getting inside the system, it's super easy because it's an HP system. Basically, you have a thumb screw. This thumb screw gets retained in the back chassis. So I think that's absolutely awesome. I love the fact that we don't lose those screws because on a lot of these systems, you end up losing them if, if it's not, you know, retained in this thing here. And so basically you just pop off the top once you've gotten that done and all of a sudden you're inside. Okay, so kind of the key things, let's kind of go through the system and just talk about all the really cool features here. So first off, you're gonna see that the CPU here is an AMD Ryzen CPU. Now this is an older generation, so this is the AMD Ryzen 5 Pro uh, 2400GE, so this is a 35 watt TDP processor. A couple things about this generation. So first off, these were really lower power CPUs than we're seeing in like kind of current generation systems. And the other thing is just the fact that I think that this is where we started to see a bigger divergence between AMD's power consumption and Intel's power consumption compared to the rated specs. And so this is a four core eight thread processor. Frankly, this is the one that is probably my favorite in this generation. I think there was an Athlon and also a 2200GE, but I think that the 2400GE, if you're looking for a U system, this is the one I would probably get. We're gonna talk about performance in a little bit, but I definitely think that that is a, a big win in this generation. Now to get to the SO dim, basically all you have is this little fan flap here and you're just gonna pop this thing open and then basically you can see that you have your two SO dims here. Now in our particular system, we only have eight gigabytes of DDR4 2666 and these are SO dims. They're pretty easy to just go get and upgrade if you wanna go do that. Frankly, with the four core eight thread processor, I think going up to something like 64 gigs really doesn't make any sense. My personal opinion is that these are probably systems that you're gonna target more in maybe that, I don't know, maybe 16 to 32 gigabyte range for most people. I think if you are gonna go up and you know put a lot more RAM in there, I think you kind of want more processor. And that's just kind of my opinion, but I think that a lot of people are gonna find the same, just, you know, at some point you really need that much memory for such a, you know, low core count. And then also these are older generation cores, so they're not necessarily the same performance per core uh, as the newer generation ones. So I think that just balancing CPU performance and this memory, I would suggest somewhere in the 16 to 32 gigabyte range. Now on the bottom here, what we have is we have the two and a half inch hard drive tray assembly. And I have to say, I'm just gonna say it aloud, you know, frankly, I do not like the way that HP does their two and a half inch drives. I think that Lenovo and Dell both have better systems for them. This is an okay solution, but it's definitely not great. And the newer ones, of course, have better solutions. But to me, this, um, you know, this is not great. And to service it, you actually have to go pull out two screws. And once you pull out the two screws, then you can remove this. There's also a little tiny cable that you have to make sure that you don't break. And then once you do that, you can basically get to the bottom of the system or kind of like where the rest of the components are. And then in here, what you basically get is you get a SSD, so an M.2 SSD slot, as well as a Wi-Fi slot. So you're gonna see that in our we actually have the Intel Wi-Fi. In this generation, I think you got like either Intel or Realtek. We basically get 802.11ac, so you don't get Wi-Fi 6 in this. This is definitely an older AC generation of Wi-Fi solutions that you see. And also Wi-Fi in all of these is always optional. So just keep that in mind that if you are shopping for these and you do want Wi-Fi, you should definitely go check out what this has. I think that the Intel AC Wi-Fi was probably the high-end solution. So it's kind of cool that we have that here. In terms of SSDs, this is a M.2 SSD, but it's a like Western Digital, I think uh, SN520, it's like a little tiny solution on a much larger PCB. So like they're not even using the vast majority of this PCB over here, right? Like, I mean, this is not a high performance SSD. It's 256 gigs, PCIe Gen 3. It's an okay solution, but it's definitely not something you'd want for performance. But if you just need to go boot into an OS or whatever, it's perfectly fine. Personally, this is one that I could see somebody wanting to swap out, definitely. But you could also put a two and a half inch drive in there. So there's a couple different options that you have. I will say though, that this is the ProDesk 405 G4. There are also higher end solutions. So I think one of the first tiny mini micro nodes we looked at was like the 705, but really what HP has done since then, if you remember that Elite Desk 805 G6 and also G8 minis, I mean, those things are definitely as high end, if not maybe even a step above the Intel based solutions. And so you'll get things in those, like you'll get two M.2 slots instead of just a single M.2 slot. So personally, I think if you wanna go build a more expandable system, I would go to a newer generation and the Elite Desk 800 series where you would get actually like two M.2 slots. Cause I just think that gives you a little bit more storage options. But if you just are fine with like one SSD, cause I think a lot of people are, then this is perfectly okay.
Okay, let's get to power and performance. So specifically, I said that we have the AMD Ryzen Pro 5, and this is really the 2400 GE. And what you see there, that's a four core eight thread processor. It is a older generation, like Zen processor, not like Zen 3 or Zen 2 or anything like that. It's definitely older generation. And this was interesting because this was something that AMD did that was a little different than what Intel was doing at the time. Intel basically responded to AMD coming into the market by they said, okay, we're gonna move our core i5. So that would kind of like the, this would be like a core i5, I guess maybe like a 8500 or 7500T competitor. And what Intel basically did with the 7500 series, which was four cores, four threads, they said, uh oh, AMD's in the market. We're gonna move up to six cores and six threads with the 8500T. And so what you see is that the AMD Ryzen 2400GE is actually very competitive with the 8500T, but you know, there are definitely cases where you will see something like, you know, Intel do a little bit better just because they have physical cores. So it kind of depends on if you can use that threading effectively. And then, you know, that, that basically is kind of the range though. I think, I think you can think of this maybe as a 8500T-ish competitor in terms of performance as you're looking at all these Project Tiny Mini micro notes. Now, in terms of power consumption, this system really did not use much. I mean, we were at like, I think like 45, 46 watts or so back when we were testing this at, you know, maximum and idle was kind of much closer to like 10 watts. And I think a lot of that is really just due to the fact that this is an AMD processor. What we started to see as Intel decided to compete a little bit more vigorously against AMD or they had to, what you basically saw is that Intel said, yeah, this is a 35 watt processor, but the TDP and actual power consumption started to diverge and like now it's way different. But you know, in this generation, they were still kind of close, but you can definitely still see that AMD was lower power in this footprint than Intel was. So that is something nice. Again, I don't think everybody's gonna be running these things at 100% power all the time, but you know, it's not too bad. Now, with all that said, you know, the fact is that these things are, you know, 300, say 30 bucks, maybe 350 bucks, that kind of, it's kind of where you're going to start entering this market. And, you know, somebody's going to definitely look at this and say like, hey, that's way cheaper than the newer nodes. But at the same time, the newer nodes also, I mean, when you have like a Zen 3 eight core 16 thread processor, you're getting more than 2x the performance that's in this thing. So it is one of those ones where it's like, it is basically okay to say like, well, you know, I could have two of the new ones versus one of these. And then when you look at the pricing, it doesn't necessarily look too bad. Now, the cool thing of course, is that these are lower cost nodes, which I think is great because sometimes you just want more nodes and this is inexpensive. Okay, and now it's time to get to our key lessons learned. And specifically, let's start looking at this one gigabit ethernet port because I know that's what everybody's gonna wanna talk about after this review. Now, how I got this was actually kind of weird because I was going and just browsing eBay. I saw an 805G6 mini. I was like, yeah, we should probably go do that. And so I, you know, purchased it on eBay. And then the seller of that actually reached out to me and he said like, hey, um, I have the USB type C port that's already in the system, but I also have a one gig you know, which one would you prefer in the system? And I was like, man, you know, I review these things on YouTube. So I think maybe, maybe people would rather see the one gigabit ethernet one. And to that, he's like, wait a sec, you're, you're Patrick, like from SDH Patrick. And, I, and I'm like, yeah. And so he's like, well, if you're really that, that's cool. I'm going to send you both. And so he basically sent me the, uh, you know, one gig ethernet thing. And I tried putting it in that system and it didn't work. And I was like, man, what the heck was Jose doing? And then I was like, wait a sec. And so I pulled up the older generation one, which was this G4, and I realized that it actually, that one gig would actually fit the older generation ones. And so what it turns out is that there are basically two different-ish versions of this whole Flex IO thing. Now, there's actually more than that. We'll talk about that in a sec. But basically there's the older generation, which I think was like G4, maybe some of the older ones too. And that's actually what we have here. So what we actually got in this is an extra one gig ethernet and it's a real technic. Now when we see this in the OS, what you're gonna see is that this is actually a Realtek USB NIC, which is kind of a bummer because I think if you're just gonna get a USB NIC, there is just part of you that says, well, why wouldn't you just get a two and a half gig ethernet one? We did an entire series looking at two and a half gig USB adapters. Like, why wouldn't you just get one of those and just plug it in and it's cheaper, it's easier, you can have more of them. So if you really want it, I think that's an, a, you know not a bad solution. But if you do want an internal NIC, it is a Realtek, it is USB, but you can get it internal if you go find the old you know, Flex IO for this. And the reason that's kind of weird is that the 805 G6 and the newer ones actually use the V2 of these Flex IO things. So with the new V2 ones, there's actually an option allegedly for a two and a half gig, a Intel i225 
two and a half gig network port. Now I will say I have ordered now two systems from HP.com and I ordered them, I think like right at the start of 2022. And they basically said, okay, you know, it's gonna take a couple weeks to ship. Both of the orders, I got notes from the HP store, like at the end of February saying like, hey, uh, we can't get you that two and a half gig. So we're gonna cancel your order or you can delete it. So I don't know exactly what's going on, but it seems like they're basically not shipping those two and a half gig flex IO like like two V2 NIC ports. And so that's kind of a bummer because I did order two of them with that. Also, by the way, those systems, they updated and then they said that my ship date is until like the end of March. So like, I don't know what's going on at HP. It's just a total bummer. And like ordering stuff on HP.com, I think is just absolutely horrible right now. Uh, it's a terrible experience and I would not go do it. So that's why we purchased these things on eBay because you can actually get the units. And you might be at this point looking and saying like, hey, could I take the HP Z2 Mini G4 and take the Flex.io port that has Thunderbolt out of that and put it into one of these systems? And no, it's actually not a compatible form factor either. So basically HP has a whole bunch of these things. I think they just kind of get really excited by like making their own proprietary form factors and they see how many they can make. They must have like a conference room where they just all like say, hey, you know, who has a new one? What, what new shape can we come up with today? Um, but anyway, Basically, you're kind of stuck. You want to go find the Flex.io V1 for these systems. And if you do that, we'll put the part number that we used in the description if you want to go find them. They are kind of hard to find, but you can get one gig ethernet in these. And also a lot of the older G4 systems in general. So hey guys, I know we've been doing a lot of newer generation systems as Project Tiny Mini Micro has progressed. We've just kind of moved up the stack, but this is one that we've had for a while that we just never did. And then we had a really cool reason to actually go show it because it wasn't really too exciting when we originally did it, but now it's super exciting and I hope you are as excited for this and the potential to have two internal NICs as I am. Of course, I probably would still just, I'm cheap and I probably would just go do USB external NICs, but I can see why having something internal that's more secure is definitely a way to go and a lot of people would prefer that. Still, this was a very cool system to get to look at that I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did enjoy this, well, why don't you give this video a like, click subscribe, turn on the notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.